Why isn't your ex contacting you, especially if you've already done certain things like using the no contact rule or writing a heartfelt letter to them or something like that? We're going to be getting into that in this video and please stay tuned through to the end because you're probably going to be hearing some things that you haven't heard elsewhere. Anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and get right on into it. Hey there, this is Clay with ModernLove.Life. Now, if you're trying to get back together with your ex, if you're trying to save your relationship, you could find it very frustrating that your ex is not contacting you or not responding to you, especially if you've already done certain things that you know, you're know you supposed to do, like no contact or write them a heartfelt letter or something like that. And the important thing here is that no contact, although people may talk about it like it is such a thing, no contact is not a 100% thing for getting your ex to contact you. I, I, again, I, I get it, you know, I used to be where you are. I was once a person trying to save my relationship with the person I call my big ex. It scared me to death when I first heard about no contact, this whole idea of giving up this one small thread of, of contact that we had with one another. I thought that like if, if, if I wasn't in contact with her that somehow she would just forget about me, um, all that sort of stuff, you know, regardless of the fact that, you know, we had been together at that point in time for about five years. I thought somehow we should just like get total amnesia. I think a lot of times people are there in that mental and emotional place. But um, no contact is not a 100% thing. I remember even back then hearing people on the internet say things like, you know, yeah, you know, we all want what we can't have. You gotta cut contact and make them, you know, miss you and then they'll come crawling back over broken shards of glass to be with you or something like that. It doesn't really work that way. I mean, sure, it can. It can, of course. Uh, you know, if you if you tell someone to do anything, there's always a certain percentage of people that are going to have success with it and a certain percentage of people that aren't going to have success with it. It doesn't always work out that way. I've talked to so many people over the years who have used no contact as a tool for trying to get their ex to contact them and they have just ended up frustrated and it has not worked for them. Same when it comes with writing a heartfelt letter as well too, you know, apologizing for everything that you've done wrong and, you know, making sure that you write it by hand and send it in the mail and all that sort of stuff. Again, it could work for some people. It may not necessarily work for you. Again, I've worked with so many people over the years who have tried some of these very common strategies and tactics. It just hasn't worked. Their partner has not responded to them. So what we need to do here is we need to understand that our partner is on their own path and has their own free will to choose whether or not they're going to contact you, right? It, it, it's not like you can just take some, you know, internet superstition and like, you know, yeah, reverse psychology, don't contact them and they'll contact you or it works all the time. No, it doesn't. Uh, but, you know, they obviously have their own free will and they obviously are going to be able to choose, hey, I want to talk to you again, I miss you, or, you know, no, I don't want to talk to you for whatever reason. So what we want to do is we want to get into what those reasons are that could be stopping them from contacting you and then removing those from the equation. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into those three reasons right now. But before we do, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button while you're down there as well. You would not believe how much this actually helps our channel grow and reach more people. The first reason your partner may not want to be in contact with you is that they're still feeling too much hurt. Um, to contact you. Again, you know, stuff happens before breakups, during breakups, after breakups. People say things, people hurt people's feelings, all that sort of stuff. If your partner is in this place where they're still hurt about something that happened or they're still, uh, you know, lost in pain or they still are shocked or they're still holding on to some hurt or resentment or anger or something like that, it could stop them from contacting you. Of course, they might want to. Of course, they could miss you. Of course, they could have a variety of complex emotions about what they're feeling and experiencing. And there could be a part of them that wants to contact you and see how you're doing and connect with you and maybe even get back together with you. But if that pain is too great, then they're not going to be able to actually act on it. And they're going to feel held back 
for any number of reasons. And you know, this is where something like that heartfelt letter apologizing, you know, authentically apologizing for something can be very helpful. This is also where something that we talk about um, called the fresh start message can also be very helpful as well too. But again, the key component here is that you have to be able to genuinely apologize for something by putting yourself in your partner's shoes and seeing the experience from where they were standing, not, you know, you rationalizing it or you saying like, hey, you know, I actually did this, so you shouldn't be mad at me or, you know, stuff like that. But you have to actually have empathy, which, you know, again, is why we talk about things like advanced relational skills and connecting on an emotional level and all that sort of stuff. Again, if this is new to you, feel free to check out this playlist right up here. It goes over all that stuff. The second reason that they could be holding themselves back from contacting you is that they feel that honestly it's wrong to contact you as an ex-partner. Now people do have these sort of arbitrary limiting beliefs. They might think, you know, hey, you're your ex is for a reason and so you shouldn't contact one another or you go through a breakup with someone you should just do no contact with them, you know, for 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 all everyone talks about the no contact rule to get your ex to miss you and contact you. There's a whole other side to no contact as well too, which is to, you know, put the past behind you and to just not get pulled back into some sort of dynamic with your ex. And you know, they may have heard about this somewhere along the way, and they could just be doing no contact in order to try to put the past behind them. Um, or, you know, they could feel it's wrong. They could feel that maybe they hurt you by breaking up with you and so that they have no right to contact you. I mean, I've seen all sorts of things before. Like, one of the most frustrating things is when maybe they feel that they hurt you and that they have no right to contact you, so they're giving you space, and you're thinking, hey, um, you know, they broke up with me, so therefore they should be the one to contact me. And both of you want to talk, but neither one of you is able to actually get past that emotional hurdle to, to you know, pick up the phone and call or text or something like that. It can be really frustrating. And then the third thing that could be keeping them from contacting you is that perhaps they feel that there's too much romantic pressure between the two of you. That's to say they see you through too much of a romantic lens. And you might be thinking, hey, I want them to see me through a romantic lens because that means I'm not in the friend zone. Uh, we've talked about the whole friend zone thing before on this channel. You don't have to worry about it. But if they're feeling too much romantic pressure, they could be thinking, hey, you know, I want to talk to you, but if I talk to you, what kind of message is that going to be sending? Are you going to be thinking that I'm interested? Am I going to be giving you false hope? Does that make me a bad person? Because maybe I don't know how I feel about you right now. All I know is I miss you. And if they're feeling too much romantic pressure, it can cause them to keep distance. Because when it comes to things like interacting with a previous partner, people generally tend to play things very, very, very conservatively. And so they don't want to give you the wrong impression. They don't want to think that they're giving you false hope. They don't want to think of themselves as that kind of person that's going to string along their ex or anything like that. And so what's really important here is to actually make sure that you're dropping the pressure between the two of you and to make sure that you're shifting from being relationship focused to being connection focused. Now, of course, dropping the romantic pressure is going to be really helpful. It's going to allow them to focus in on connecting with you in the present moment rather than worrying, where is this going? What does this mean? Am I a good person? Am I a bad person? Um, and then, of course, being more connection focused yourself is also going to be helpful as well, too, because so many people who want to save their relationship, um, you know, they want to get back together. They want to save that relationship. They want to feel as if they're in that relationship again. And this causes so many people to be relationship focused. Everything that they're saying and doing is, hey, is this going to lead us to being in a relationship again? And what I want to encourage you to do is to, instead of that, become what we call connection focused. And that is to realize that if there is ever going to be a relationship between the two of you, it's going to come organically from having a solid emotional connection. That is to say, the relationship doesn't create a connection. The connection actually organically creates a relationship. I mean, that, that's probably how you and your partner got together in the first place. You were connecting really well with one another. You met each other. You went on a few dates. You connected really well. You had a lot of stuff in common. And then you started thinking, hey, maybe we should be in a relationship with one another. That's probably how it happened. Of course, um, a less 
ideal way to do this is to meet someone, try to make a relationship happen, and then hope and pray that there's going to be some sort of connection there between the two of you. Of course, that could happen, but... Um, you know, there's also a lot of people who are technically in a relationship with one another, and there's just, you know, nothing there. There's n no connection there whatsoever. So don't go for the relationship hoping that the connection is going to follow. Go for the connection having faith and trust that a relationship is going to follow. Um, some things that you can really do to help you when it comes to getting past all of these sorts of things is to have what we would call a same team conversation with your partner. Now a same team conversation is something that sets it up so that the two of you can actually work together and drop pressure and um, understand that, hey, we both want the same things here. We're not trying to, you know, screw the other person over or take advantage of someone or use someone or anything like that. And it's a really powerful tool that can help you to set things up on the right foot. And if that is something that you want a little bit of help with, we have a very modestly priced little mini course called Relationship Repair. You can go ahead and find that over at modernlove.life slash RR. Uh, R are for relationship repair. I'll also put a link to it down below in the description for this video. But with that being said, I hope you found this helpful and I hope this has given you some ways that you can help your ex feel more comfortable contacting you uh, besides just using no contact or sending them a, a heartfelt handwritten letter or something like that. Anyway, with that being said, thanks again so much for watching. Take care and I'll talk to you next time.